Um, I, I told you this was going to happen. It's not quite a Keith get the tin moment, I don't think, but it's it's probably up there. I told you this was going to happen. I told you that he, he would hang on and hang on. The fury that surrounded the revelations regarding the, the, the parties, the carousing, the knees-ups, the suitcases full of booze, the wine fridge, the, and, and the sheer scale, the number of actual parties that were being thrown in Downing Street and its environs when we were not allowed to hug our mothers or visit dying relatives or attend nephew and niece's funerals. I told you what was going to happen. I told you his gamble, his calculation would be to keep it at bay for as long as he could until his client journalists and sycophantic supporters could be relied upon to start claiming that it didn't matter. If I was even more self-obsessed than I am already and if I had a slightly more um, pliant producer, I would have dug out the clips of me actually predicting, but these are professionals that I work with and they can't be expected to trawl back over past episodes of the programme massaging my ego retrospectively. I do plenty of that my own. But I would have played out the clips of me telling you how this was going to play out. They're probably out there. It probably got clipped up at the time, actually. I told you this is what was going to happen. He'll kick it down the... So first of all, deny that it happened. You remember when he denied that it happened? He actually denied there were no parties. Second of all, oh, well, there were some parties, but I definitely didn't go to them. How's he going to get out of that when we've got evidence that he did? Third of all, oh, well, I did go to what you folks might possibly refer to as a party, but I, I didn't... Re when I attended that party, I didn't realise it was a party... I believed it was a work gathering. So there it is. Stage one, two, three. Number one, no parties. Number two, parties, but I didn't go. Number three, parties, but I did go, but I didn't realise it was a party. Can't even claim it wasn't a party, because every other... Oh, good Lord, I nearly used a word there that I'm not allowed to use on the radio. I mean, there's only one word that comes after every other, especially if you were brought up by parents from Yorkshire. So, number one, no parties. Number two, well, there were parties, but I didn't go. Number three, all right, there were parties, and I did go, but I didn't realise it was a party. I can't claim that it wasn't a party, because every other beggar realised that it was a party, especially when they were all told to bring a blinking bottle. Where does he go after that, you asked me? And I told you. Well, where he goes after that is just hoping that he can keep it in the long grass for long enough for it not to matter when the guillotine comes down. And you said to me in your thousands, that won't work, James, that won't work, we're too cross, we're too... And I said to you, I promise you that's what he'll try to do. I thought it wouldn't work because I thought the guillotine would have fallen by now, I thought the report would have come back, and then, of course, I don't think there's any massive conspiracy in the corridors of power, but who knows these days, frankly, given that Cressida Dick was allowed to hang on to her post despite presiding over an absolute avalanche of appalling conduct by her by members of her police service. The Sue Gray report, well, first of all, he commissioned someone else. You forget all of this. Are we actually going to be able to get the chronology right? What time is it? Six minutes after 11. So let's start again. Number one, there were no parties. Number two, there were parties, but I didn't go to them. Number three, there were parties, and I did go to them, but I didn't realise they were parties, even though every other beggar there did. Number four, I will commission a report into these parties. Number five, I'm going to have to replace the person conducting the report into these parties, because it turns out that the person I appointed to conduct a report into these parties attended at least one of these parties. Number six, we'll find someone new to conduct a report into these parties. Number seven, the Metropolitan Police have decided... No. Number one, there weren't any parties. Number two, there were parties, but I didn't attend any parties. Number three, there were parties, and I did attend the parties, but I didn't realise they were parties, even though every other beggar at the parties realised they were parties. Number four, I will commission an inquiry into these parties. Number five, I will now have to replace the person who I commissioned to conduct an inquiry into these parties, because it turned out that he attended one of these parties. Number six, I will now appoint Sue Gray to conduct this inquiry, and we'll get a fairly quick response, because number seven, the Metropolitan Police will not be getting involved in this, because they don't investigate events retrospectively. Number eight, the Metropolitan Police actually do investigate such events respectively, and therefore they will be investigating these parties, which means that number 
seven, eight, nine, we can't get the Sue Gray report in its entirety until the police have conducted their inquiries. Number 10, the police are still conducting their inquiries and have now moved from 100 questionnaires to number 11, actually interviewing people. And number 12, here it is. Here's Richard Littlejohn in the Daily Mail and various other members of the client media telling, oh, it doesn't matter after all. Remember when you were really angry? What? weeks ago about the fact that you couldn't go to your grandmother's funeral or, 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 or kiss your mum or visit your dying father in a care home? You remember when you were really angry about that? Well, wind your neck in, Doris, because it doesn't really matter. Calm down, dear, because none of that was important and all of this is just confected by angry Ramonas who can't forgive Boris Johnson for lying to them every single time he opens his mouth. We love being lied to and you Ramonas should frankly get over the fact that you hated and think it has no place in either British democracy or number 10 Downing Street. So we're there. We're at point 12. With apologies for any points I might have missed on that path from, there weren't any parties, right through to, yep, there were, and I went to them, and I filled my boots, and I had a bottle of Prosecco, and I did the flipping conga with Nadine blooming dories, and none of it matters because, mm, Ramona's. We're there. I mean, how big do the brush strokes have to be? How big a paintbrush do I need for you to see that what I've just described has actually happened in real time in front of your very eyes over the course of the last few weeks? And now the media is full of people claiming, oh, the parties don't matter. The parties don't matter. It's just a vendetta. Lying. Lying and lying again. Doesn't matter. Oh, and there's a war on. There's a war on, so the fact that we've got a completely untrustworthy Prime Minister who is regarded with a mixture of derision and disgust by every other leader in the uh, European Congress, the European Compact, doesn't matter at all. No, we, what we've got to do is keep the man who's a massive liar and regarded with derision and disgust by all of our major allies. We've got to keep him in post because otherwise it would... I'll tell you what would be really bad. Getting rid of the bloke who everybody else thinks is ridiculous. The, the, the logic of this is beyond even the most kindergartenish of political uh, uh, grasps. You've got to keep the bloke in place... You've got to keep the bloke in place despite the fact that he lied because there's a war on and all of our potential allies in that war think he's an absolute clown car. Okay, just run me through the logic of that. It's ridiculous to get rid of Boris Johnson when there's a war on in Ukraine because they're literally queuing up to call him ridiculous. You've got a former Prime Minister of Finland leading the line at the weekend. The comments comparing Brexit to Ukraine. Oh, he didn't compare Brexit to Ukraine. When he compared Brexit to Ukraine, in public, on television, he wasn't actually comparing Brexit to Ukraine. Sorry? Run that by me again? Yes. I'm happy to explain. It's very much like when he said there weren't any parties, and then it turned out there were parties, uh, but he didn't go to them, and then it turned out, well, there were parties, and he did go to them, but he didn't realise there were parties. So when he compared Brexit to Ukraine in public, he wasn't actually comparing Brexit to Ukraine. He was just... He was just... He just... <laughs> he just said something different, which contains the words Brexit, Ukraine, and almost compare. Maybe like. He used the word like. He didn't mean it like as in Brexit's like Ukraine. He meant it as in um, something else. Brexit, Ramona's, shut up, go away. And you put up with it. And it's there. And it's there. And you think back to the Partygate debacle. And you think, as Paul has already texted me, I remember you saying all that. Um, but not so much as of a revelation as just previous to Partygate was decorating gate when he stated three times that he paid for the Downing Street flat renovation himself. And, and that's why we're now Trump. That's why it's happened. Except that in America, it was only Fox News and some weird cable outfits that continued to defend and amplify and disseminate Trump's lies. In this country, it's most of our major newspapers, almost all of their major columnists. In this country, they cannot call a spade a spade because they are so embedded with the spade that they can never turn around and admit that it's made of flipping licorice. And that's why we are where we are. So I don't win any prizes for this, just because I told you exactly what was going to happen. I don't win any prizes for that, because you know how I knew exactly what was going to happen? Because it had happened before, and before that, and before that. And because the whole sorry outfit is built upon the lies on the side of a bus, the lies about the Irish border, the lies about trade being improved, the lies about food getting cheaper, the lies about energy getting cheaper, the lies about fishermen having their lives improved, the lies about farmers having their livelihoods improved. Lies 
lie after lie after lie after lie and you can't turn around and admit it because if you do, you're calling yourself a mug and you're making all those people you've been groomed and gaslit and conditioned to hate, you're making them right and you can't make them right because the only thing you've got left to celebrate and to feel good about is the fact that they're all so upset. So how are you going to respond to the latest lies from Boris Johnson? You're going to claim that they don't really matter and it's all being amplified and exaggerated and invented by all of the people who you can't forgive for being right about almost bloody everything over the last six years. Up to and including the fact that he lied about the parties and now he's got his client journalists and sycophantic political colleagues to lie to you about whether or not they matter and whether or not you care. So... Is it going to work? I wish the emotion I felt 30 seconds ago was still as strong as it is now. I wish I could now thump the old desk or slap the old microphone with the, uh, with the passion that I felt 30 seconds ago, 60 seconds ago. Okay. Is it going to work? I wish. I could look down the barrel of the camera. I never look down the barrel of the camera. Who do you think I am, Andrew Marr? I wish I could look down the barrel of the camera and go, of course it's not going to work. But I can't. Because you let them get away with it last time. And you let them get away with it the time before that. You let them get away with it the time before that. And you let him get away with it the time before that. And when you've got a Secretary of State for Health and a Chancellor of the Exchequer queuing up on television to say, he didn't actually say the things that we all saw him say on television yesterday. I don't know what happens next. But I do know this. When you couldn't see your mum because of the rules he made, when you couldn't go to your nephew's funeral because of the rules he made, when you couldn't do a million things that in ordinary times you would have loved doing because of the rules he made, he was riding roughshod over all of them. And then he lied about it, and then he lied about lying about it, and then he lied about lying about lying about it, and now he's got them queuing up to tell you that none of it ever mattered. So will it work? 0345 6060973. And just because I'm not sure I can cope with the psychic toll of you all answering, yes it will, James, to that, I'm going to throw another question into the mix as well. And that question is this. Are you going to move on? Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Are you are you are you cool now? Oh, I was very very cross a while ago, but now I've really thought about it. It doesn't matter, and it's very important that at a time of such international turmoil, we have a leader in place who is a proven liar and regarded with a mixture of derision and disgust by pretty much every other relevant world leader on the planet. Because that that is the argument I'm hearing today, and even my grizzled, uh, wizened old ears were staggered to hear that being offered up as, as a logical defence of Boris. We can't, we can't get rid of Boris Johnson now because there's a war in Ukraine. And the one thing you need when there's a war in Europe is a leader who is a proven liar and regarded as ridiculous by all of our major European allies. I think it probably will work. Uh, I mean, the anger that we felt, the disgust that we felt, the familiar sense of being taken for an absolute mug as a country that we felt when Boris Johnson lied about parties and then lied about lying about parties and then lied again about parties that weren't parties and then I could go on, I often do. But now you've been told not to care. Doesn't matter. Everyone move along, please. Nothing to see here. Poor old Allegra Stratton. I wonder what she makes of all this. The fact that none of it mattered a, a, at all should have just been a, a little slap on the wrist. Whew. And if we have time, I'd like a copper to tell me why you think this is taking so long. And I mean a proper explanation, not a sort of um, uh, an audition to write a column for the Daily Express explanation, which I appreciate um, are also quite easy to get hold of. 20 minutes after 11 is the time. Ben is in Brighton. Ben, what do we reckon? Um, I think you will get away with it, and I think it's not just the client media. I, I do think it's events. Um, I, I mean, I think that what... Yes, happens, the passage of time. Happens, yeah, it's not just quite that. It's this weird succession of events, for me at least. Mm. I look at it, it's 2019, you, you, you had the prospect of an election, and he was bleeding support daily. Was he? And then... For some, yeah, for some bizarre reason, along comes Joe Swinson and Jeremy Corbyn, agree to an election, 
and bang, he's in power when they could have kept him just hanging on in oh, there. Oh, yes, I powerless. agree with that. Oh, well, Nicola Sturgeon bears responsibility for that as well. Yeah, oh, oh, absolutely. But she had some, some, some gain in that. Then along comes a global pandemic. And bizarrely, um, that kind of rescues him by making him, despite the fact he was wandering around practically denying it by shaking hands with everyone and all yeah. the rest of it. Yeah, right. Then along it comes and he catches it and suddenly he's some kind of national martyr. And he's popular again. Then the vaccine rollout, along with the global pandemic, and now, most disgusting. They're still lying the spectrum... about the vaccine rollout. Jacob Rees-Mogg was lying about it the other day, claiming that we couldn't have done it uh, in the European Union. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. It's, I mean, it is incredible. Yeah, absolute nonsense. But, but anyway, we are where we are. But then, uh, I, I think what's happened now, uh, most extraordinarily, is that you get really egregious um, offence to the British public with parties and everything. Yeah. And then along comes the spectre a horrendous spectre of World War Three, and guess what? He's off the hook again. Somehow the parties don't matter. Obviously, when I predicted yeah. that this was going to happen, I didn't know World War Three was going to be uh, breaking out on the horizon. But, of course, we have to be reminded that the man who used the words World War Three to describe what would happen or uh, what Remainers were claiming might happen in the event of Brexit was not David Cameron, as is often reported, but was actually Boris Johnson. And it is everywhere you turn, the evidence of his uh, absolute absurdity is the nicest way of putting it is absolutely irresistible. And yet here we are. So what about this argument? And I, and I guess it's probably one that, you know, I make it and I wonder why it doesn't have more weight. And the answer is because not enough people and not enough important people are making it. But the idea that we need to keep him in place because there's war on, is rendered a little bit ridiculous by the knowledge that, A, the last thing you want when there's a war on is a, is a leader who's a proven liar, a proven serial liar, um, still under, of course, police caution, and B, he is regarded as, at best, ridiculous and at worst, despicable by pretty much every relevant European ally. I think that, I think, um, I mean, I think your argument's true. I definitely well, I know think your it is, but, where, but where's the, I know it is, but where's the, where, how does that become a rationale for keeping him in place? The fact that there's a war I on. think it becomes a rationale because I think people... Put, I, I, I do kind of get the instinct that people people feel really Don't afraid now of any kind of change. Yeah. Simply because... Wait till you know, they hear they about Neville like Chamberlain. Wait till they hear about Neville Chamberlain. <laughs> <laughs> it's 23 minutes after 11. You're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. Will it work? And if Ben is right and it will work, why will it work? Given that, the argument that, oh, we can't get rid of the Prime Minister now, there's a war on... I mean, it should take into account at least some of the attributes and qualities of the Prime Minister, and most obvious among those would be integrity, trustworthiness on the world stage, and r relationship with allies. Has he been disinvited from that European Council meeting? I haven't, I haven't got to the bottom of that yet. It was a few days ago. It was Boris Johnson let it be known that he would be prepared to attend. And you sort of read that and thought, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I hope he goes, because I'm British and I want to be in the room where it happens. The room where it happens. The room where it happens. But if he doesn't go, it's entirely on him. It's not It's not a British... Oh, that's what they'll do. It's an insult to Britain. It's an insult to Britain. Jonathan's in Bishop Storford. Jonathan, what do you think? I think he's finished, James. No. And I certainly hope he is. Go on. I've written to my local MP, James Cartledge, over mm. the weekend. Yeah. Absolutely just saying, Johnson thought these luck of nine lives, Johnson again thought the war would save him. I'm afraid it won't. I used to be a, used to be a lifetime voter uh, with my family. It used to dr vote for Conservatives. I'll never, ever vote Conservative ever again, even if Johnson goes. I'm sorry that I don't recognise the party, don't recognise what they do. I'm actually shocked that the, the lies that guy tells. And what you've got to ask yourself is, Joe, yeah. is why, why did um, his brother Joe leave politics when John Johnson became PM? That just shows you what he thinks, doesn't it? Yes, I think it does. I, I think that is a completely fair comment, and, and yet my natural decency makes me almost want to sort of say to you, oh, well, we don't know, and we don't know that, and we don't know this, but yeah, I, I think, and, and uh, you know, uh, I, I have it on fairly good authority, that's exactly why. He did I think he's he run out of road, James, and I think uh, also what you've got. What you've but got how many times have you thought that before? If you don't mind me asking. Oh, loads of times. There you go. You see. I I actually regret. I'll tell you something now, James. Go on. I actually regret um, voting for Johnson. Yes. I was a Brexiteer yes. for a certain reason. We won't go into that because that's, right. that's not part of the conversation. But Fair um, I think that Johnson has let the the whole the uh, Brexit side go. He used it as a political tool to get in. And being honest, he's been a letdown from the minute he got in. And, and you've only got to see where his stock. I mean, look, his father's been in trouble. 
and his brother, brother Joe wanted yeah. nothing I'm, to I'm, do with him. Yeah. What was the straw that broke the camel's back for you? Um, consistent lying. Consistent, <laughs> just, <laughs> Several just, straws. Just, just consistent, well, okay consistent then. Just lying. just put a different hat on for me then, because you you were closer to the constituency of people that let it all pass, that forgive it all, and now they're moving sadly, and this happened with Trump and it's happening with Johnson under our very eyes. They're moving from sort of holding their noses and looking the other way to, to actually now denying the evidence of their own eyes and ears. We saw it on Sunday. Oh, he didn't say those things that we all saw him say. The party thing, I think, is... is I, I always sit here and say something and think, well, that's the absolute stinger. And then someone like you comes on and reminds me, actually, there was that other thing and that other thing and that other thing. But denying that there were any parties and segueing effortlessly to admitting that there were parties, that he had attended them... Um, and now, of course, but they didn't really matter after all. Uh, uh, how do people continue to not just go along with it or look the other way, but to claim that he's the victim here? To, how does that happen? Do you have any insight into that? Delusional hope, James. They think he's nine lives Johnson, but he's really just Billy Lyle Johnson, who, quite frankly, shouldn't be in politics. You should go and clean toilets or something, and even then you'd need to show him how to do it. What? And, and you, you, you've got to look at his hair. His hair is how his life is chaotic. <laughs> I'm not. That's so a bit pot kettle for me. Final question, I promise. And I'm not. I'm not. A lot of people think I should pick you up on the Brexit thing, but I, I will respect your desire for me not to. When you Go were, on, when you too. were, when you were voting for him, and and we'll just include the B word a tiny bit here. What did you think you were winning? Um. Well, because. <laughs> Delusionally, I yeah. thought, um, and I'll use that word, Kevin, I, um, I, I thought that Johnson had sold it, the fact that right. it okay. was something more than it was, which yeah. is Johnson all over, really, and, it, and quite all. frankly, yeah. we didn't get ever, we'd never got what we were promised, you were we never, never going were going to, to because oh. the guy's a liar. Yeah, and, and maybe the, the simple, is it liberating? What would you say to people still clinging to the idea that he isn't? How liberating is it? Because you sound quite angry, I know that's another Just bit. open your eyes, open yeah. your eyes, Johnson is finished, he's a... He's a a, a busted flush, and that's saying it kindly. Well, and I've been covering him since he was mayor of London, and I have thought on more than one occasion, Jonathan, as I'm sure you've heard me express the, the, the sense that surely people won't put up with this. Surely he has reached the point of no return. Surely, to coin Jonathan's own phrase there, he has run out of road, and yet here they come. Uh, here they are. Here they are the champions. Here are the people that he's... Look at the people he's put in the House of Lords, to use another example of, of, of something that should really have been a breaking point. The calibre of the people he's put in the House of Lords has made a mockery of the entire institution, whether you're a fan or, or not of the House of Lords. The people that he's put into it are unbelievably inadequate, and I'm not even talking about the son of the KGB spy. I'm talking about the failed... Mayoral candidates and the failed politicians and the weird former members of the um, Revolutionary Communist Party and, and, and sundry and the bloke with that, what's the fella called? He, he always gets a bit gets a bit tasty on Twitter at about eight o'clock on a Saturday night and ends up Daniel Moylan ends up in what's he doing in the House of Lords? It's just incredible. Some of these people would struggle. I think to, well, a bit, a bit like Jonathan there, I'm not going to pick a job now that is perceived as menial, because I think if, if you were to suggest any job at all, it would be an insult to the people doing it. But here they come, you know, here they all are. Has anyone heard from Digby Pudding Jones lately? Is he still waving his little flag, Brexit hard man Steve Baker? You don't see much of Mark Francois these days, and yet here, they, here, here, here are all their acolytes, their disciples, all their followers. He's doing a great job. And they, they can't do that anymore. So we've now reached the bit where, um, let's attack the critics. Can't defend the man, really. Can't defend the man. Let's just attack the critics. Let's attack the critics, which is going to be great fun for people like me. Um, how will it work, then? How, how, because everybody was more or less agreed that the uh, revelations regarding parties, the subsequent lies, and then the sheer scale of the uh, contempt demonstrated for the rules that the rest of us had to follow... We were all more or less agreed this, this was huge and that this really mattered. And I thought that the guillotine would fall quickly enough for even Boris Johnson to run out of road. And it hasn't. It didn't. I, I don't think that was a, um, a prediction or a calculation based upon consideration. I, I, I just think no, no one saw it coming. Especially, you know, the police changed their mind. They went from saying... Um, 
that we're not going to investigate to saying that we are going to investigate. There, there was no way of knowing that it was going to take this long. No one saw it taking this long. But the longer it took, as I explained to you at the time, the more likely he was to walk away. And yet I still struggle. Just because people like Daily Mail columnists and, and, and the usual suspects elsewhere in the British media, just because they are now mounting a rearguard action to persuade you not to care about the fact that the bloke who made the rules that meant you couldn't see your dying grandmother was treating those rules with absolute contempt. I, I don't even know how they, where they find the audacity to do it, but I know where they find the confidence to do it. They find the confidence to do it because many have spent their entire careers persuading the British people to act against their own interests or to believe things that aren't true. So how will it work? Well, I jumped the gun slightly. Will it work this time? Will it work? The invitation you're receiving from various Murdoch mail and telegraph types to stop caring about the fact that the man who made the rules that you obeyed did not obey them on an epic scale and then lied about it. Is it going to work? 03456060973. And then if you want to join me in trying to work out how it works, I'll never know for sure how it works. I think if we did, we could somehow put measures in place to stop it from working. We could, well, is that true though? Can you make enough money? Would the person telling the truth about such matters ever end up with the biggest audience on a radio station? I don't know. Whether it works like that or whether the, you know, the newspapers that sell the most are the ones that are selling tickets for a ghost train. The ones that are, um, are persuading you to vote against your own interests. Explaining to you that the people in charge should stay in charge because, you know, that, that's, that's the status quo and that's how it should be. The trade unions are the enemies. The doctors are the enemies. The firefighters are the enemies. The teachers are the enemies. I don't know. Can you make it as commercially successful to actually tell people the truth? about the real reasons why their life is perhaps not going as well as they hoped it would? Or will it always be more commercially successful to blame it on immigrants or, or Muslims or trade unions or single mothers or unemployed people or teachers or firefighters or junior doctors? I, I honestly don't know. But, I, but, but on this, talk to me about yourself, all right? If I promise not to bite your head off, will you tell me why you have gone from really, really caring to suddenly not caring. And I won't patronise you by suggesting that you've swallowed the nonsense being served up by the right-wing media. Uh, you give me your reason. Why, you, why now, I mean, you were baying for Boris Johnson's blood when it emerged that his staff were wheeling suitcases of booze into the... He was celebrating his birthday with his interior decorator when you couldn't even celebrate yours with your own children. I'll say that again. He was celebrating his birthday with his interior decorator when you couldn't even celebrate yours with your own children. But now, what is it, three months later? Now you, you completely agree with everybody who's saying that it doesn't actually matter at all and we should all move on. Just talk me through it. Talk me through it and I will I absolutely strain every sinew not to interrupt you. Which is the closest I'll ever come to a promise. 03456060973 is the number that you need. 11.38 is the time. And Martin is in Croydon. Martin, what do we reckon? <laughs> um, James, great to speak to you again. Um, we spoke a while back um, when the topic was about um, Lewis Hampton. Okay. And I'm not quite sure if you're familiar with the term 419. Yeah, I am, I am, I am, I am. You, you, yeah, I mean, the reason I'm not comfortable with it is because it apportions a particular type of fraud to one country, no, doesn't it? Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, it does, but um, the gist of it is, I seriously think that the whole country has been 419. Yeah, in, I do too. In that I've, I've been watching sort of um, um, some Netflix um, series, like um, the Twitter, um, the, yeah. the, uh, Becoming Anna, um, Bad Vegan, um, the uh, Tinder swindler. Yes, okay, and yes. They all have a particular thing whereby people who are, you know, all the people who are um, quite successful. I'm beginning to think, Martin, that you, you might know. have missed my monologue yesterday about the sunk cost fallacy. Uh, I may have, but. No, because was, that is I'm what sure you're about, business. that is what you're about to describe to me, but I am all ears. Yeah, because. Ordinary people or some highly intelligent people mm, that's um, the point, I think. have been able to be persuaded 
by, you know, what we would consider ludicrous <laughs> scenarios. And I mean, I, I'm not familiar with one particular one where um, a chap remortgaged his house yeah. because he fell for the scheme. And this this chap was, you know, hardworking, sensible. Yeah, okay. I, listen, I, 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 no, I know. And then because they can't, they, because they, they've, they've eventually sunk so much into something, they can't pull out. So they keep sinking and sinking and sinking more. That's what it means. That's why I use the exactly. fancy phrase sunk cost fallacy. But in the context of Boris Johnson, what's the payoff? So this is why I think the 419 analogy, much as I enjoy it, it doesn't quite fit for me, and I've used it myself, so this isn't a criticism of you. What What is the jackpot? What is the, you know, the, the 50 million pounds that is in my dead uncle's escrow account in Dubai or Nigeria or wherever it may be? What is the payoff with Boris Johnson? I think it, it, you get to a certain point where you've invested so much. that Yeah, you, in, in expectation of a big prize. What's the, the big prize? The big prize is what was promised in the first place. But what was you're that? Hoping, you're hoping more out of, you know, <laughs> hope than anything What, what else if they've got the prize? What if the fact that our Ukrainian refugee policy is an international disgrace and this idea of getting British families to offer up their rooms is designed deliberately just to let newspaper columnists say, how dare they say that Britain isn't generous? 150,000 families have come forward to offer up a room. Never mind the fact that it's so difficult to actually... Uh, fill in the paperwork and open up and find someone to come here. That, what if it? What if they are getting? What if it was just always about being horrible to foreigners, and indeed to British people of colour? Because some of the stuff that they want to do with regard to teaching empire and to, what if they do think they've got a win? What Martin? What if they're staying loyal because they're loving it? It is possible, um, but I believe that they feel that they had something promised to them and they can't turn back. But maybe they're getting what they were, but they were just promised a country in which we would return to a sort of Alf Garnet approach to immigration. We'd return to the Enoch Powell school of, of politics. We'd have policies that were designed to keep all refugees out. And I don't care if, if my food's getting more expensive. I don't care if my heating's getting more expensive. I don't care if I end up living in a bus shelter. It, it, they're really treating those. And also, you know, we're, we're going back to the days where black and, and Asian British people aren't treated like my equals. They're not being treated the same as me. The, the descendants of slaves are going to have to know their place again because we're going to stop teaching kids about the realities of slavery we're going to stop being woke and actually acknowledging that people with different sexuality have just as much right to access in our society as people who are straight or people who are repressed homosexuals like most um of the most furiously anti-woke people tend to be what if that what if that is it martin what if this is the plan what if they still think they are winning i need oh. you i need you to prove me wrong and i need you to do it quickly <laughs> The thing is, I, I, can't. Said, I, you I need So what's the jackpot then? If that's not the jackpot, what's the Johnson jackpot? What is the payout? What's the 50 million quid in your dead uncle's bank account that they keep doubling down on in the hope of receiving? What is it, Mark? It, it is still there. It is what still is it? Hope what is that it? They're going to achieve. But they always switch the, the, the narrative as to what it is that they... The yeah, end they do. Is. yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Control our to keep, borders. Keep, to keep the hook and keep the Global people Britain. on board. Take back you control. Know, so it, there, there's always going to be a spin. Yeah, and well, I, I mean, maybe people, we're, well, maybe there is. Some people will fall for it. Maybe everyone's got a different jackpot in their minds. Maybe that's how it. That maybe that's the genius of the whole project. Everybody's got a different jackpot, but I'd love to know what people think it is. Britannia rules the waves. Britannia waves the rules. We're going to go back to a mythical past, and that way you can keep. Ah, uh, maybe that's it. Maybe you can keep doubling down. It's a mythical past. A mythical past. We're going to go back to the mythical past. And some of the things I just mentioned, if you found them offensive, well, they happened in our past. And that was our real past. It's the mythical, we're going back to the, what's the jackpot? If it's a 419 scam, which is a reference to the email you get telling you that somebody needs your help getting $50 million out of their dead uncle's bank account. And if you send them 10 grand or 100 grand or whatever it may be, then you can split the winnings. And people keep going back for more. That's the sunk cost fallacy. I've invested so much in this, I cannot even begin to entertain the possibility that it's a massive scam and I've been conned. The, the, the Sunak cost fallacy, you might call it, if you saw the Chancellor of the Exchequer being interviewed on Sunday morning. It's only one vowel extra from the, from the actual phrase, the sunk cost fallacy. But the payout there is 50 million quid from the fraudster's mythical dead uncle's account. What's the payout? What's the Johnson jackpot? on that 419.
I'll take calls on that, actually. We're wondering whether the invitation you're receiving to forget how cross and disgusted and hurt and heartbroken you were to discover that the man who made the rules that prevented you from visiting dying parents or, or, or attending your own children's uh, birthday parties, <laughs> going to care homes or uh, funerals, all of those rules. Uh, when you found out that the man who made the rules had uh, laughed in the face of them and you were justifiably heartbroken and hurt, you're now being told by his friends in the British media to, to move on. Um, nothing to see here. A few slapped wrists, perhaps, and then back to business as usual. Are you going to accept that information, invitation? If not, why not? And if you are, why are you? 0345 973 Michelle's in hook. Michelle, what would you like to say? Oh, James, you've really struck a chord with me uh, oh, this morning sorry. talking about this. <laughs> um, so I work as a counsellor, um, and my fundamental belief is that nobody can tell me what to feel mm. or, and nobody can tell me what to care about. Um, I have... Um, well, you're rare. Very... I mean, or, or you're not noticing that it's happened because, I mean, I think we're all, aren't we, a little bit subject to the, to, the, to the influences around us and the, uh, the information well, we receive? We are, definitely. But, you know, what I think happened, you know, back, well, through yes. 2020 and 2021, had such a massive impact on so many people. I mean, for myself, my father died on the 20th of May, oh, 2020. Sorry. On the day, thank you, on the day that, you know, Boris was actually attending a party. Yeah, okay. um, incredibly difficult time. I'm never going to forget that. And there are... Have you tried just sort of... Have you tried just, just, just moving on or making crass comments about warm oh. Prosecco and party poppers and, and mm. acknowledging that it's not really relevant to the fact that the day he was partying, your dad died? Have you tried that? I don't know, Michelle. Well. I just sort of... Now, thinking let me out loud. See. Working as a bereavement counsellor? Yeah. No, we okay. never move on. We learn to live with. We learn to live with our losses. But also at the moment, what we're living with is the anger um, and the, the real kind of festering, very present anger. But we have the situation in Ukraine mm. and, and it's, and it's, despicable it's terrible mm. and what i'm finding i'm doing is that i don't care any less i don't feel any less about the behavior of boris and the government i just care a little bit more about what's going on in ukraine at the moment yes. and you know when i work with my clients and i look at how to manage anger and we have strategies to help let it out well our obvious way to let out our anger with what's been going Go on, on over the last two years is with is with our vote and yeah, that's although that's that's a long way off, and the longer off it is, and be interested in your professional perspective on this, the the the, the dissipation of anger or the dissipation of the the, the, the dilution of emotion, the more mm. time passes. I mean, that's a big part of grief and bereavement, isn't it? That yeah. think things get better with the passage of time. So, the political calculation, and he's been helped enormously yeah. by the delays in the investigation and the change of the Metropolitan Police's policy on whether they would or not. But the longer it goes on, mm. the less likely people are to carry that grievance and that grief into the ballot box, no? Well, I think we're in an extraordinary situation I'm here. not going to argue with you, know, you about we, that. We, we've, never, <laughs> you know, we've never had this happen to us before. And yet, it's true to say that some people may allow themselves to be taken in by the rhetoric yes um be taken in by or, know, or they're so desperate to cling they just they're clinging yeah. to the myth that he's on their side and and during the party gate uh, uh in the headiest days of those revelations they could feel their grip loosening but they actually didn't want it to mm -hmm. so someone comes along with a column in the daily mail or a, or a radio show and grabs their little hands and super glues them back to the myth of Boris Johnson being on their side, and they're actually grateful. Those are the people yeah. that interest me the most and that I understand the least. Mm. Yeah. Um, it, it's really difficult to say and to judge because I know we are obviously massively also led by what is being reported in the media yes, as well. Yes. Um, it's a little bit like, well, COVID doesn't exist at the moment, but my local hospital is, is closing its doors because it can't take any more people. Uh -huh. But, you know, it's not being reported in the news. So we're, there's a massive influence of what happens in the media. But I would say to anyone out there who is really, you know, just, just can't believe what's happening, but they do care so much about what's going on in Ukraine, write this down. Write yourself a letter Go about on. how you feel today okay. yeah. about what's going on. And, you know, a, a, write it to yourself. And as long a letter, pour it all out, put it all in there, and then put the letter somewhere safe. And when the 
appropriate time comes, get out that letter and read it. And That's then interesting. You, you'll be reminded about those feelings, because those feelings are still going to be there. You know, they're still going to be present. They might just be a little bit buried. Well, a lot buried. Be That's got to be the calculation, because I think if it, if there'd been an election the, the day after it emerged that he was having a party mm. on the... Forgive me for, for, for bringing it back to your own... Mm grief but on the day for example that you lost your dad if there'd been an election the day we discovered yeah. that he'd be toast yeah. but the, 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 that that graph will just be in decline that yeah. graph will be coming down fast with every passing mm. week and then you get the, the the client journalists and the sycophantic politicians mm. coming along to to tell you to even mm. accelerate the decline in that i don't yeah. i don't get i don't think anyone gets it mm. do they? you know the human mind is not it's not a computer is it you can't mm. unpick the algorithms and work everything out but it's very sad it is but it's where your job becomes even more important yeah but i've only got 1.33 <laughs> million listeners i need to have at least 30 times that to make a meaningful uh, difference it's all right they all have friends and spread, family. spread the word michelle eh? spread, spread, the word. spread the word it's 11:55. <laughs> thank you and I, I i reiterate how sorry i am for your loss um, James is in Bracknell. James, what made you pick up the phone? Um, I think it's um, that uh, it's, 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 it's sort of a bigger question that you're suggesting, I think. Yeah. I think it's almost sort of slightly sort of uh, existential in, in some ways to the kind of identity of the country and the rule of law and everything that goes with it. If yeah. your own leader is breaking the rules that they um, uh, create, just to give you an example, um, I was... <coughs> um, you're on. <sighs> hey, hey, take your time, James. Take your time. We don't, uh, we, don't, uh, we, don't, we don't have to do this if you don't want to, but we've got plenty of time if you do. Uh, I'm, I'm very sorry. This is going to be too difficult to talk about, so um, okay. I might have to find another time. I'm sorry. No, that's quite... Would you, do you, do you, would you like me to share a couple of the details that you shared with the producer, or should we just wait for another moment to do this together? Um, <clears throat> just, um, hey, no, you just look after yourself. Don't worry about me or the radio show. Thank you very much. No, no, you, you. You, you take care of yourself. And, and, and I think people will be able to work out the, 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 the feelings you're being told to get over and they didn't matter when you were obeying these rules, obviously in very difficult circumstances. And, and I'll just leave it there. Look after yourself, James. Tony's in Luton. Tony, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Hello. I just want to remind people where we are, where we came from. It's two years ago tomorrow since we went into lockdown. Good God, it feels like decades, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's a beautiful spring day again, if you recall. Yeah, I do, uh, right, yeah. And by then, he'd already missed a couple of the meetings. He had delayed lockdown. Cheltenham had taken place. Yeah. Twickenham, he went to Twickenham two weeks before. You know, having not been to any COVID meetings. Mm. And my fear is this. And please, I'm listening to people and I'm welling up like yeah. your previous caller did. But if you say Tony Blair, people say war. Is this man going to be known as Boris Partygate? I know, um, I know people aren't that worried about party game they're worried about the they integrity are. the loss of integrity that yeah. that shows him but they're not, not because we're caring. talking about each other here we're, i'm worried about the loss of integrity you're worried about the loss of integrity but the most powerful engines in the british media are now telling you that a he's he's a stand-up guy who's doing his best b he's, <laughs> he's he's on a succession of of laps of honor because his performance in all of the areas that reality tells us he's been abysmal has actually been brilliant c the only reason why anybody ever criticizes is because they're still bitter about Brexit. And D, he's, he's leading the world on this, that and the other. I mean, it's, it's so completely detached from reality now that I think the time has almost come to an end for us to, 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 to describe our own position, to describe reality to each other. We have to start trying to work out why some people see the polar opposite of what, or, or claim to see the polar opposite of what's unfolding before their very eyes. I mean, you, you're, you are one of the media, and as you said, you've got 1.3 million people. 0.33, mate. 3.3. Three, three. Oh, Don't forget three, that 30,000. They all count. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll round up that next right. time, 1.4. <laughs> you know, your previous caller said, write it down. Yeah. You know, let's just start. Yeah, you know, if I asked you now... Yeah, but we, you, you and me don't need to. Who are we, these yeah, people? We've got to share. We yeah. are people. We are voters. We yes. know people. Yes. And I'll tell you what, the Tory voters have gone very, very quiet 
over the last year. No, they and haven't. It's hashtag send her back this morning on Twitter, mate. Hashtag yeah, send her back. 1.332 million. Well, I don't know. I don't no, know. it's not. We've got to mobilise and remind ourselves of the Parliament, you know, all of it's there, the and perhaps, meals, perhaps the, we, we, the sewage we, in the rivers, the yeah. Marcus Rashford. The, you know, they not only loss of, not, they have no integrity, they have no morals. Someone needs to just do one of those flipping headstones that Ed Miliband has, except just list it full of all the transgressions. Uh, yeah, the, 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 you know, we'll break international law in a very limited and specific way. We'll send Jacob rees mogg to Balmoral to lie to the Queen. We'll l- prorogue Parliament unlawfully. We'll lie about parties, and then we'll lie about lying about parties. We'll lie about having our flat decorated we'll try and set up some little sort of little uh, yeah, cheeky little financial arrangement so that a donor can pay for it oh we got a donor to pay for it then we got busted so we paid the money back and claimed that a donor hadn't paid for it i, I mean where does it end we need an headstone that's what we need we need an headstone up in every town in every city we also i think and it's tough for him because covid and now war are both situations in which you want to espouse unity, we also need to see a little bit more from Starmer.